everybody, I'm Keith Hilson with the Schmidt Music Trombone Shop back with another mouthpiece review for you and today we've got a new series of models that we've been excitedly waiting for, specifically the Lasky Joseph Alessi signature model mouthpieces. So we know it's hard to believe it's been just a little over three years since uh, Joseph Alessi and S.E. Shires have started their collaboration and it certainly created a number of fantastic instruments at the tenor trombone and alto trombone level and so of course after we made that transition with Joe Alessi, the question was, okay, well, what's going to happen with his signature mouthpieces? Well, we got the answer recently with his collaboration with Lasky. Um, this is something we've actually known about in the trombone shop for a little bit, but they, they made the official announcement at the Midwest Clinic, and we were just able to put our hands on these. I'm excited to share them for you here. So we've got a variety of different sizes. Um, today, I'm going to be playing on the 55, uh, which are the 25.5 millimeter 5G assembly. Essentially. Um, so I'm going to be playing on two of the different models, the 55 Solo and the 55 Symphony. We'll talk about what those mean. Um, I'm going to be playing all of this today on one of the SE Shires uh, TBQ30 uh, YR uh, Q Series trombone. So I'm going to take a play and we'll talk about it afterward. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
One of the things we've been watching with a lot of interest in the Toronto shop and the larger brass shop has been the, uh, the, the relatively recent, within the last few years, um, Bakun acquirement of the Scott Lasky line of mouthpieces. So just as a quick recap for those of you who are not familiar with Lasky, Scott Lasky was a custom builder, very well known in the brass world, um, especially among uh, trombone or tuba and horn players, but he certainly did trombone, trumpet as well. A very highly regarded custom maker, unfortunately passed away a handful of years ago. And um, after some consideration, the family chose to work with Bakun musical instruments um, to recreate and keep the Lasky line going. So in case you're not familiar with Bakun, they are actually a clarinet, a very high-end custom clarinet maker in Canada. Now, of course, right away we're saying, what in the heck is a clarinet maker doing acquiring a mouthpiece maker? Well, it all goes back to what they have as far as tooling and their relationship with S.E. Shires and Eastman. So Bakun, a handful of years ago, became a part of the Eastman family. And one of the things that Bakun has really, really excelled at is using very, very high-end machinery, um, especially their, their lathes, their milling machines, to create very, very, very custom, very precise, you know, clarinet um, components and designs. And so while on the face of it, okay, a clarinet maker buying a brass mouthpiece maker, why does that make sense? Well, it makes all the sense in the world because they have uh, folks, actually the, one of the members of the Bakun team is a very, very fine brass player themselves, and they have the experience to go through and utilize all of Scott's designs and go through and really kind of reformulate what he, what he did and all of his designs and using the very, very highest end machinery to recreate those designs. So um, now, of course, we've seen some of the, the original Lasky designs coming out in horn and tuba and we'll be excited to see what else they do um, with some of the other brass instruments going forward but um, of course the question came up well is there going to be a collaboration between S.E. Shires, um, the Eastman family, and Joseph Alessi with mouthpieces? And the answer were his signature mouthpieces with Lasky. So the difference here as compared to some of you know, the other Lasky designs is obviously these were custom designed with Joe Alessi here. So what's going on with his a signature model Lasky mouthpieces? First off, um, there are three different sizes, 55, 60, and 67. So these equate to basically a 5G, 4G, and 3G. And within those sizes, they have have two different cup depths, essentially, two different setups. They've got the solo setup and the symphonic setup. The solo setup is a little bit shallower cup, um, whereas the symphonic, as we might guess, is going to be a little bit deeper uh, cup. And especially with the larger sizes, uh, we also see some differences in between the two as far as the throat and backboard go. Uh, specifically with the 55s, the throat and backboard actually stay the same here. So as many of you know, I am traditionally a 5G player, which is why I, of course, gravitated to the 55 fives here. Very interesting things going on. Um, certainly with some of, you know, Joe's uh, mouth, mouthpieces that he's created with different makers before, um, you know, a, a very, very particular type of playing in mind. Um, you know, we've talked about some of this here. It's, you know, you have to have some really, really great air control, breath support. You have to approach the mouthpieces in a certain way. And I think there's certainly still some of that going on with these mouthpieces. One of the things that really struck me right away is that they are very comfortable. Um, they, like some of the other mouthpieces we've been seeing over the last couple of years, have a little bit flatter rim. Um, I'd say kind of a semi-wide, not too wide, but it is a little bit flatter than you know more of the box style kind of semi-curvature that we are used to seeing. Um, this speaks to, and maybe this is the whole other video, how I, I'm noticing more and more that we're seeing a little bit flatter rim being uh, utilized on different artist models. Um, and maybe, and to a certain extent, what players are preferring. And maybe that speaks to some other trends that we're seeing in our overall you know, sound and playing approach. But anyway, there are, you know, I call semi-flat rim, not really, really flat, but semi-flat, which gives a really, really nice cushion one of the things we talk about with that rim shape is the flatter the rim, the more secure, the more stable the mouthpiece is. And I think that certainly accomplishes that with both of these mouthpieces. Between the two of these, I certainly noticed a difference in particular in the overall airflow and support. Um, I really, really liked the Symphony. I felt that you know, again, I felt like I had a lot of room to move air through, but honestly, there were times where I felt like it was just a little bit too much for me. When that happened, um, what I found is that the core of the sound got a little bit 
thin. It got a little bit airy and I felt like I didn't have as much of the stability, the locked in nature of the sound as I did in a lot of cases with the solo. Um, the solo still, this is, a, don't get me wrong, this is not a, this is not a compact resistant mouthpiece. I still felt compared to some of my other setups, it took a, you know, it took a certain amount of air support with it, but between the two, I, in my approach, felt like I had a little bit more control, a little bit more color, a little more um, conti you know, continu continuity, rather, in the sound, kind of the stability all the way through the sound, a little bit more control, a little bit better access to the upper register. But again, that's why I think it's really great that we've got a couple of different depth options here. Now, obviously, maybe not as quite as many as some of the other models that we've seen um, designed by Alessi with different makers in the past. But in a way, I kind of like the simplification of it a little bit here. Sometimes when we start having too many different options, it can really be difficult to start differentiating and figuring out what is the exact right combination for me. So within these, the three different sizes, two different cup depths, I think this provides a lot of really, really great um, options for the player. And again, I think just the, the overall design of it here, we've seen a lot of great feedback on the overall Lasky approach. And I, I really appreciate what they've done in taking what they've learned from all of Scott Lasky's designs and applying all of those to these mouthpieces here. Obviously extremely well made, um, very resonant pieces, very comfortable, um, really nice balanced weight to them. I think they're great. I think these are going to be a really, really nice addition to the uh, trombone mouthpiece community here. And again, exciting to see another collaboration between the Eastman family and you know one of the masters of our generation, Joseph Alessi. So as always, thank you very much for watching. If you have any thoughts about what you heard, maybe you've already had a chance to experience these mouthpieces, please leave those comments in the comments section here. We'd love to hear about that. Love to have you interacting with our community. If you haven't already done so, hit that like button on the video, subscribe to our channel. We'd love to have you as a part of our viewer family. And of course, you can find the Trombone Shop on Facebook and Instagram as well. As always, thanks for watching.